The next step before we uh, fire up this EX400 is to flush the carbon filter. This particular unit has a KDF carbon filter in it. Uh, sometimes the units, depending on uh, what the store orders, come with a standard carbon block. It could be this uh, CC block, uh, which is a coconut carbon block. It's compressed carbon and it's very dust free and you don't have to flush them. Uh, these are great for chlorine. They're not really good for chloramine. So you should ask your local water department what you have, what's treating your, disinfecting your water. If you want to treat chloramine or just want a superior carbon block, that'll get rid of much, much more. And we explain how these carbons work. Uh, look in the how it works section and we'll explain, uh, look under carbon filters and you'll see how these work. But this is a, a KDF carbon filter, which is a highly activated bed of catalytic carbon and a bed of KDF 85, which is a chloramine buster along with a lot of other thing busters. And uh, this is the best carbon you can get. If you're going to use this carbon or if the unit came with this carbon, you got to flush it. These carbons are really dusty and if you run this uh, carbon dust into these membranes, you're going to ruin them right off the get-go. Uh, these are expensive membranes and they're really finely tuned instruments, so let's not do that. Let's show you how to flush a carbon. We have a brand new carbon in here. Um, these units, if they come with a KDF carbon, are going to have this little warning tag right here, and there'll be a sticker on the housing as well, uh, kind of like so. It'll be like this. And what they say is, this KDF carbon filter must be flushed thoroughly before feeding into a pump or a membrane. Um, disconnect the tubing from the pump input or membrane input and flush for 10 gallons. Well, minimum 10 gallons. I prefer 20. And uh, we're going to show you how to flush this right now. So I'm going to turn it around on the back side so you can see a little more clearly. Um, there is a video of the fluid circuit of this, so you can see how the fluid, how the, the water flows through it. I'm going to show you right here. Now, um, what we want to do to flush a carbon filter is to take the, the tubing that comes from the carbon filter output, and it branches into two different branches here, and it feeds the membrane inputs. Here's the drain kit. I'm going to put it aside. I want to disconnect these two membrane inputs right there. So, and I'm going to point these down. You can run it into a drain, you can run it into a bucket. Um, I'm going to fill up a beaker to show you how the carbon dust looks. Um, and we're going to flush this carbon filter out. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the water pressure really slowly and allow this dust to escape. So I've let this run just for about half a gallon so you can see the carbon dust that has uh, ejected from the carbon filter and the stream of water is uh, it's got a lot of air bubbles in it and so we're going to let this run for about 20 gallons uh, until the carbon stream is uh, really clear of air and clean of carbon fines. Now you can see that there's no, almost no air bubbles in the carbon anymore, uh, in the output stream rather air bubbles are purged, the water is coming crystal clear, and now it's safe to hook up these tubes back to the membrane inputs and move on to the next step. Now that the carbon is flushed, I'm going to reattach these feed lines back to the membrane input. Make sure they seat past the o-rings into the bottom of the tubing boss, on the bottom of the fittings boss rather, all the way past the o-rings, nicely seated. Now we're going to flush the membrane. Um, the membrane housing has not, ha not had water in it yet, so we got to purge all the air out of it and flush the storage solution out of it. There's a glycerin-based storage solution in it, food grade, uh, and we want to flush it all out before we use this water. Uh, these units have a flush valve, so we're going to make sure the flush valve is open. That's parallel to the drain line. Perpendicular is closed. We want to make sure it's open. So now the flush valve is open. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn the water supply on slowly once again. I don't want to hammer these housings with full water pressure. Um, and I'm going to hear the water flowing up through the pre-filters and moving through the membrane housing. Let's do that. 
I hear the housing's filling up now, and soon drain water's gonna flow. Now if you notice, this water is uh, very bubbly, like there's soap in it, and that's the storage solution in the membrane. And that's why we wanna run this uh, for about uh, half an hour to an hour to flush out this membrane. And the RO is gonna start making water at this point too, very slowly, and it's gonna be purging out the RO side. So we don't really want this to go in our storage tank as well. This should go to the drain as well. Now I'm gonna hook the drain back up to the drain. This water filter has been purged for about a half an hour, and now we're gonna put it into normal operating mode. So I'm gonna start the water again. This time I'm gonna close the flush valve, and then the permeate water uh, is gonna really start flowing. You'll also notice this water's a little, a little discolored, a little yellow, it's a little sudsy. That's the storage solution coming out of the RO side of the membrane. So as I did with the carbon, uh, as I did flushing the membrane initially rather, I wanna let this run for about a half an hour. Um, really you could dump the first 20 gallons of water. This thing makes uh, about 17 gallons an hour. Under warmer water and higher pressure, it can make up to 23, 24. So, you know, I say let it run for a half an hour and, and just don't use that water. Uh, and after half an hour, this will uh, be perfect water. And that's how you purge a membrane and get ready for uh, normal RO operation.